Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. Today we'll be taking a look at Hammer Station in Star Wars The Old Republic. Now this is going to be a flashpoint around level 20, I believe it's, uh, you can access it anywhere between level 16 and 20. I'm not exactly sure as to the level range, but that's basically when I got in. I think my first run was at level 16. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through this and just want to show you guys uh, how the instance is laid out and give you some general tips and hints when it comes to running the instance and what you should be doing. Now first and foremost, I want to preface this by stating I should not be tanking. I am a rogue type class, stealthy backstabbing, that is what the Jedi Shadow is, that's how I'm specced and that's the playstyle. I am not suited to tank, but... Since I know how to tank, and uh, the rest of the group was relatively new to the instance, I just kind of took charge. I think something to keep in mind is that, especially with low-level instances, this is the case in most MMOs, it's not really a huge deal. You don't necessarily have to be a tanked spec uh, character to actually be able to tank typically in low-level instances. But you won't, very rarely I would expect to see, uh, see a character of my specific type of build tanking in high-level runs. So you start off with general trash mobs. You've got normal type mobs and then strong and elite. Those are basically how they're graded in order. The normal basic mobs you fight in the world and then the strong which are the silver the silver outline mobs and the elite which are the, the types that you're seeing here which are actually the gold outline mobs. Um, something to keep in mind, crowd control going to be good when you have multiple elite characters. You can see uh, one, of the, uh, one of the elite droids there is actually uh, being uh, held up by force lift which the, uh, the other Jedi consular hadn't been able to do. Unfortunately, two of our group members got taken out because they weren't line of sighting. Uh, ended up pulling too much in one of the pulls, and uh, since they didn't line of sight, there was actually uh, some major issues there. They ended up dying to that. Our healer couldn't keep them up. But anyways, uh, lots of trash mobs to start out with, and uh, something that I found very useful is it seems that obviously the the more difficult monsters the strong and the elite monsters they 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 do more damage but it's always seemed to me that you actually you're going to be taking much less spiky damage if you take out the easy targets first so take out all the normal enemies first in those groups of enemies if you've got one or two strong enemies elite and a, a whole bunch of normal enemies just take out the normal enemies first i found that to be a very very useful tactic uh, it, it feels like you take a lot less damage. So you just continue to uh, clear trash, eventually you'll come up to this, uh, and then by clicking on it, it's actually going to activate the drill, um, and then from there you'll just be moving on to do more and more trash. Everything obviously clearly indicated on your mini-map in the lower right-hand corner, so it's really hard to miss stuff. Um, eventually you'll come up to the first a boss here, which is going to be the Tunneler, DN314 Tunneler. Uh, two primary things to keep in mind this fight. He has got that little uh, mining beam there, which basically just focus targets a single person, and uh, the healer just needs to pay attention, because at that point in time he's not going to be doing much else damage uh, to anyone else, so whoever he ends up focus targeting, you just want to make sure that your healer is keeping them up. And then besides that, the only other real thing to pay attention to in this fight is you will have those little droids come down. And they just kind of walk around and bug out a little bit, but eventually they start to, I don't, I don't know if there's an exact term for it, but they start to essentially short circuit and then they will blow up. Uh, so all you're going to want to do is once they start, they'll, they'll st sit in place, as you can see the one just to the left of me doing, and they'll start to spark. At that point, they're about to blow up, so just make sure you're not within range when they blow up and you should be all set. And basically it's just those two things that you want to pay attention to in that fight. Uh, keep up whoever gets targeted with the beam and avoid when they're exploding. And as you can see later in the fight, it gets ridiculous. There are so many of them. Uh, so just make sure you're moving around and not standing right next to these guys once they're blowing up. And then that's basically it. Besides those two little things, it's essentially just a tank and spank. Uh, very, very basic fight. And there you go. That is the first boss encounter. Some sweet gloves dropped. Unfortunately, I did not get them. Oh yeah, and make sure you're not needing on gear that you don't need for your character. <laughs> it does appear like uh, even if you have a character of an armor class higher than light gear, you can still need roll on it. Um, I'm not positive though, but I think that that is the case. Uh, now you'll come into a room after that boss fight, and it, it looks pretty simple. You'll just engage those little moms, but all of a sudden there'll be three strong guys who'll kind of be lobbing stuff at you. So just be wary that they will be coming out. Um, and being caught by surprise with that could be a problem. I could see someone pulling the characters in the center group and then not realizing that those things were going to spawn, and if the healer were out of line of sight, that could be an issue. 
I uh, actually just took this shot because I wanted you guys to see this. Just a cool little tunnel here. Uh, again, just going to be one of these various elite monsters. The trash monster is very simplistic. I haven't found any major issues. I wanted to show you this, though. You'll see various types of tanks, and they'll be uh, clearly indicated as there'll be kind of red arrows pointing to them. They're typically some sort of explosion. This one was like a frost explosion. As you can see, he actually froze the elite monster. So when you see those, try to get enemies uh, near it and then blow it up. Have one of your ranged characters do it would probably, probably be best. This is the next boss fight of Vorgand the Volcano. Uh, he has got two adds with him. They are two elite adds. Uh, I suggest actually making sure you just take out the adds first. The boss himself isn't really much of a, uh, an issue. He doesn't do anything ridiculous. So if you just take out those, if you take out those adds first, it should actually put you in a in a really good position. And then just have the tank kind of uh, take care of the boss, hold them in the corner, and uh, then from there you just again zerg them down. And eventually. There you go. Pretty simple stuff. There's also a flamethrower with the adds, uh, so make sure you keep those away from the healer. Just try to point them in the opposite direction. Pretty basic tanking stuff. And actually, I did end up getting this. This was awesome. A uh, huge upgrade. Unfortunately, it doesn't look as cool as what I was wearing, but no big deal. Uh, these conversation tables. This is something I actually kind of find a little bit annoying. Everyone has to specifically click on the table before it even starts. Uh, it, it would be much easier if we just had a dialog box where just you can start it. And I know there is a join conversation thing, uh, but if some of your group's not paying attention, especially if in your pu in a pug, it can take you quite a while to to get going essentially uh, if they don't click on it when they're supposed to. And I could see that being very frustrating if you're with a pug, especially ones that uh, try to be annoying. <laughs> so yeah, just make sure that whoever you're grouped with, they realize whenever you come to these conversation pieces, everyone needs to accept it before it actually gets going. Okay, so I'm uh, gonna be continue to be doing some more trash stuff. Again, nothing special here. Uh, what I wanted to show you coming up though is uh, you'll be clearing a few more packs of mobs and then after that you'll eventually come to this bridge. Now first you wanna take out these two turrets. Again, pretty basic stuff, tank and spank. But the bridge will turn red right before this giant flame wave with that meteor comes across it. Make sure no one's standing on the bridge when that happens, because <laughs> that could be a huge, huge issue. And then once it turns blue, it means you're safe to go. Now, the bridge is red for a, quite a while. Um, I think it was anywhere between 10 and 15 seconds before that flame wave came. Uh, so again, if it's red, just make sure you guys are off it. Either just stay in front of it or don't even try to go past it. Uh, just wait for it to turn blue. Better safe than sorry. And then lastly, this is going to be the final boss encounter. Uh, this one is not difficult, just a little trickier. Uh, there are a couple of things here with him. He's going to drop mines on the ground. He's got the knockback there, which is something just to keep in mind. You're going to take damage and he'll knock you back away from him. Um, I found this fight was more difficult with uh, much more, uh, a few more melee characters. Uh, the first run I did of this particular flashpoint, I had two, I was tanking and then I had two uh, other ranged DPS with me. The problem is if you have all melee DPS, the mines that he drops on the ground, as you can see there, there are mines on the ground. Uh, the mines that he drops on the ground are going to stay around him for quite a while. And, uh, and that makes it difficult because you can see he's not really moving from his position. He's just kind of chilling out there. I didn't try line of sighting him. I'm a, that could have worked. A lot of times it will. Um, and in addition to these mines, there are also going to be uh, adds that spawn. It would be wise to just have the DPS pick them up. They're normal. They're normal characters. They're not strong. They're not elite, so they're very easy to take out. So if the DPS takes them, uh, if the DPS actually focuses them down pretty quickly, it's gonna help save your healers. But, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Drops mine on the ground. Avoid those. Uh, do keep in mind, you'll have noticed in the fight that they will glow red when he's about to drop them, but they're still there. They they actually stay there. It's kind of this little yellow ball. So just make sure you're actually paying attention to that and I try not to walk over them, if at all possible. All right, guys, and that is it. That is the Instance Hammer Station. Again, I just wanted to give you a little walkthrough of it, uh, give you a couple tips and hints based on my experiences so that when you first come upon it, you will be better prepared. All right, guys, uh, stay tuned in the future for more Star Wars The Old Republic coverage. I'll try to be doing coverage of some of the uh, flashpoints in the game. I keep trying to call them instances. And one of the biggest things with me in any MMO is going to be the PvP, so I'll be taking a pretty in-depth look at that as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe, keep watching, and keep owning.